Hey folks, today we will focus on the demand curve. So as we know, the demand curve looks at the relationship between quantity and price. And we know the quantity and price have an inverse relationship. So if the price of a good increases, you are going to consume less and vice versa. We call this the law of demand. So we want to see exactly what factors affect the demand curve. And we can break this up into two categories. The first category, we can break it up and call this category movement along the demand curve. The other category we can call shifts in the demand curve. And the only factor that would cause a movement along the demand curve is a price change. Now remember that we are looking at the graph in today's terms, so present time. We're not looking at it from yesterday or from tomorrow, but today's present time. That's one of the, the assumptions. The other assumption is we are not going to focus on other goods except for the good at hand. Uh, we can call this Ceres Paribus, all things being equal. Now to illustrate this, when there's a price change, we then draw our graph and to focus on a price change affecting the demand curve. And we have our origin. On the x-axis, we have quantity. We can call this coffee, cups of coffee. And on the y-axis, we can call this the price of coffee. Now we can use numbers that we want to. Uh, in the previous videos, I've used 10 on the x-axis, 10 on the y-axis, and then we would have our equilibrium point at 5 cups of coffee, five dollars. Now we can see point A is right there. And now we can draw our demand curve. And again, this is where you, the, the consumer, is located. Now we also know that producers are going to be present in this graph and we can call the red upward sloping curve the supply curve and let's label this starbucks which would be their ticker symbol and now we have our market our market for coffee so if we focus on the price change let's say a price change can take place anytime today such as a happy hour and Starbucks, they do have happy hour. They may say happy hour is today at one o'clock, at two o'clock, and you can get a dollar or two dollars off any type of cold drink or drinks that they have available. So let's focus on the happy hour of one dollar less on coffee. This can be iced coffee, it can be hot coffee, up to you to decide on what coffee. And because of a dollar less on coffee today, this uh, would increase the quantity demanded by one more cup, one more cup of coffee. And this would make sense. When there's happy hour, you were more likely to consume one more or more of a certain good because the price is less. And in the case of coffee, you can now perhaps purchase one more cup of coffee and give that to a friend or to your professor. So now we want to illustrate how this happy hour is going to impact our graph. So now we know that there is a price change of $1 less. And you, the consumer, will consume 
one more cup of coffee. So now we can focus on the price change, hence $5 point A, and because of happy hour, it's $1 less, five minus one becomes $4. And at $4, you, the consumer, want to consume one more cup of coffee. And that becomes six. At a lower price, you want to consume more. That's law of demand. And at point B, you are now wanting to consume one more cup of coffee, all because of that price change happy hour taking place today. Now, this is called a movement along the curve. Because we can see from point A, we are going to be moving along the demand curve to point B. So at point B, we know that something is not right. Because at point A, we saw supply and demand intersect at point A. But at point B, we do not see the supply curve intersect at all. Instead, we see point B by itself. So now you have to kind of see the perspective of the producer. If producers are going to decrease price by $1 less due to happy hour, the producers are not really interested in making more coffee. At a lower price, producers, Starbucks, are going to produce less. And that's law of supply. When producers see the price of their good decrease, producers will decrease the quantity of the good. So now we have the situation where you, the consumer, that's you, want more, but producers at $1 less will produce less. And because of this situation, we have what we call a market failure. And this black horizontal line between the supply curve and the demand curve represents a shortage in the economy. There is a shortage because you want six cups of coffee, but the producers are willing to only produce four. So there are two cups of coffee that is not available, hence we call this market economy a market failure, experiencing a shortage. So how then do we solve this issue? How do we then find a way to get back to equilibrium? The easiest way would be for the price to increase back to its initial price of $5. And if the price increases back to $5, we are now back at a new market equilibrium and supply and demand intersect at point A, we no longer have a shortage. And when you think about this, this is why it's called a happy hour, because the price is only good for a few hours, not the entire day. After an hour, after two, after three hours, the price goes back to its regular price.